Like you don't need cable. Hop on YouTube, welcome to the hood table. Where we chop up local and globally been spoken. You don't really wanna miss out on these conversations. Just joke a little, huh? Laugh a little, get that wine in your system for your glass a little. Exposed current events talk, trash a little. You never know these opinions might clash a little. Get addicted to the content, got a binge watch. You don't like it, think you want invited. Bet your friends watching in the house and your job parking lot before you clock in. They don't wanna miss a second of this HP content. Everybody think they got something to say. So it's an open invitation, bring it to the table. But if you come whack, just know we ain't buying in. We're gonna probably turn it back until you start trying again. Yeah. Welcome, Welcome to, to the hood table. table. You don't need Netflix. You don't need cable. Yeah. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the hood table. table. You don't need Netflix. You don't need cable. Hey, everybody. Hey everybody, what's up? What's going on? What's happening? Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, Thursday for those of y'all who drank. Those of y'all who don't turn up on some water like I'm doing right now. Lord have mercy. I know I was supposed to start about nine minutes ago. I wasn't actually going to start. I was going to postpone this because I've been dealing with allergies all morning. If y'all can see in my eyes. <laughs> I look like I'm high as a kite. I've been up here going through tissue. I got tissue everywhere, you know, but I was like, oh, we've been talking about this show in our Facebook group, in our uh, Ruthless private Facebook group. So if y'all want to join, if you're not already members of that group, you know, um, matter of fact, let me just go ahead and get the link real quick to the group. Oh my god, I hate that background sound from the uh laptop from the fan, the you know, the motor of the laptop. The fan is so loud sometimes. But anyway, I just dropped the link in the chat for the roofless our private Facebook group to roofless where we just discuss the show in there. And I had actually just posted a picture in there. Somebody comment on the picture. Let me see. I have posted some old pics and some uh some uh, model pics of the highest, the the highest, his real name is Matt Sedino. And I had totally, I wasn't even thinking, I wasn't even paying attention. I, I don't know why, but I didn't realize he's the same guy who starred in the TV show back in the day called Days of Our Lives. And he's also a model. And oh my God, he has a gorgeous body. He is fine as heck. But anywho, in the TV show Ruthless, I mean, up until like this episode that came on today, I was like... That man, he 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 wasn't like he, gorgeous to me or anything like that. I was just looking at him like, oh my god, this man is crazy. Oh my god, he's nasty. He's a freak, you know. <laughs> but you know, after I ran across his pictures and his background, I was like, let me look this man up on Wiki. He has played in a lot of different TV shows and movies and sitcoms and series and. Anywho, anywho, he he is gorgeous. His body, they show like before. We saw him like that one episode where we saw him laying in the bed, um, but he had like covers over him. But this time, like he was sitting there butt ass naked in that chair, getting a back massage and getting his feet rubbed. Or I couldn't really see what the man was doing down there at his feet, but I assume he was probably cleaning his toes and massaging his feet and clipping his toenails. And probably, I'm like, this mug, I'm like. <laughs> he, 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 wow, he really has these people, I don't even know what to call it, I mean, these people are really, is it just brainwashed? I mean, I, I don't know, but anywho, y'all let me know what y'all thought about the uh, last episode, um, and we'll discuss it, and again, if you're in the Facebook group, I'm going to read some of our comments that we've been um, posted in the Facebook group about this uh, show as well, but please feel free to drop down in the chat and let me know your comments. I have like an hour to do this review because I'm on my lunch break. So we're going to start and just get right through this. But anyway, excuse me again for my sniffles, but allergies. <clears throat> so this is season seven review of this is season one review of episode seven of the outsiders now at the beginning of the show um you can see the, that roof you know she's really determined before i thought like 
all the previews to the TV show and everything. I'm like, how the heck is Ruth going to get her and her child out of there when she keeps acting like she's whipped, she's brainwashed, she's, I mean, totally, like, turned and flipped in this group. But then, you know, we, we finally are starting to see how determined she is, you know, to get out of there and to get her daughter out of there and to get Tally away from the coat, like, expeditiously. Um... But regardless of what Ruth was telling Tally, she wasn't the least convinced as far as Tally. She wasn't the least convinced, and she's still not convinced that Andrew is no longer on her side. And just like Tally was brainwashed, Ruth was once brainwashed. So she believed, you know, Andrew as well. But not only did she believe that the highest has got to him, but Tally also believes that the highest has forced himself onto Andrew to be cleansed by him or to be seated by him. But of course, um, most of the men who's already in the cult, they don't, they wouldn't see it as a force. They wouldn't. But um, the people who's already, you know, in the cult and deep in the cult and brainwashed, they just see it as it's your turn. You've been chosen. You're special. You know, you mean a lot to him. For you to be seated and for you to be cleansed, which is the same thing. But I don't know. He tried to make it sound like it's, it's such a, you know, a... <clears throat> Oh, uh, experience. It's such an experience for you to be chosen because you're being cleansed. But anyway, he just doing what he want to do with all those men because he love him some fellas. But anywho, <laughs> in the meantime and in between time, um, Tally's task per Ruth is to go to the children so she can look for a way to get Ruth's daughter out of there away from the cult. But I wonder if they're going to get all the children or if they're just going to get Ruth's daughter. I I'm, I'm thinking that it's probably just going to be Ruth's daughter, but you never know. They might be like, okay, we don't want none of these children to suffer at the hands of the highest and any of his other, you know, followers. So they might, you know, try to take all the kids. But Ruth's task is to find out if Andrew really has been cleansed because Tally is convinced that Andrew has changed. And, you know, I guess by being cleansed or seated by the highest and him not, Andrew not stopping it from happening, that to her, to Tally, makes her believe that Andrew has turned on her and that he is really, really a part of the cult now. So, we shall see. We shall see. But um, surprisingly, Ruth, she seems, you know, from what we knew of her before, she seems to have now a lot of strength, a lot of determination, a lot of confidence in herself and in Tally. She was like that that line that she gave that she um, delivered to Tally. She was like, girl, you remember we used to be some bad bitches when we was out on the street? Like, come on, girl, you can do this. We can do this. We got what it takes. We used to be some bad bitches out on the street. Because you remember they was out on the streets. They used to be um, drugs, prostitution, you know, stuff like that. But they were some bad bitches back on the street, I guess, <laughs> from what Ruth is trying to say. But, yeah, I was like, I was cracking up. But, yeah, she, she kind of, I, I guess, Tally needed a pep talk from her and telling her that we used to be some bad bitches when we used to be on the street or back in the day i think that did it so anyway she was like girl you know we was out there like that <laughs> but but when ruth was walking with andrew um she wasted she you know she had no qualm she wasted no time you know when she wanted to ask andrew about you know being seated by the highest because tally was like you gotta find now i'm gonna try to find a way to get these kids out of here but you gotta find out if my man has been seated by the highest so she wasted no time asking him andrew to look on his face i don't know if it was more of shock or anger or embarrassment but he was stunned he was definitely stunned he was like what? What is you talking about? What, what, what do you know? Who would have said something to you? I mean, he didn't understand why she found out, how she found out. And, you know, for two reasons, he obviously, to me, seemed like he was feeling some type of way that he was seated or cleansed by the highest. I mean, you could just tell by the look on his face. 
Yeah, what's up, Ben Stinker? Hey, good morning. How you doing? Thank you. Like number three. Thank you. I'll be I'll be on a roll, so I'll be forgetting to tell people to like and share and subscribe and all that stuff that you hear from every other YouTuber on here. But yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. And again, if you're not part of the highest um Facebook group, aka Ruthless Facebook group, join our group. There's a lot of them out there, but Join our group. The link is in the chat. Thank you so much, very much. <laughs> but yeah, so again, comment in the chat. Tell me what y'all think about anything that we talked about or anything that we had, you know, mentioned in the group. Matter of fact, I'm going to read uh, some things that people have been saying in the group. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to read the people's names just in case they don't want me to say their names on here. But um, let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, somebody said it's about to get real interesting. They all know that Brian is on to them. Thanks for thanks to Tally. So I'm, I'm. That's probably when you know Brian and the sheriff came to snoop around the compounds. And then somebody said, "Uh, yes, just got finished watching. Brian's giving himself away too fast." And somebody else said, I think he had no choice but to ask them the kind of questions he did because there's no telling if they would have probable cause to go back on site again. And I believe that is true. Brian, he was digging. He was digging. He would not stop the sheriff. I'm like, what the sheriff doing? He's over there sitting there having cookies and tea or, I mean, sandwiches and, you know, <laughs> even though he said he wasn't hungry. But I'm like, he ain't asking no questions. He ain't doing no investigating. The only thing that he asked, I think, was uh, when he asked about the boy, the boy, William, the one that they... Uh, tried to make them believe, actually stole the truck from that couple. I think that's the only thing he asked was, you know, did, did William learn from his mistake? Did he learn his lesson not to steal people's trucks? You know, stuff like that. But other than that, I don't think the uh, sheriff really did much. It was mostly Brian going around the compound, asking people questions. He was the one who said, can I speak to somebody, uh, one of your members privately? And mother, I can't stand mother, but mother was like, sure, let's go over here. Let's talk. He was like, not you. I'm talking about her. <laughs> he wanted to talk to Tally. <laughs> I was like, oh, Lord, did he choose the wrong one? I thought Tally was, I, I didn't know what Tally was going to do when he asked Tally, you know, could he talk to her? But he pulled Tally to the side. And y'all got to keep in mind, Tally, she got put on this front. You know, she'd have been beaten. She'd have been molly walked. She'd have been monkey stomped. She'd have been dog walked by men, by Rue. I mean, she'd been star. She'd been, I mean, she's been going through a lot. And locked up in that, uh, locked up in that, um, I forgot what they, them containers, locked up in that container. So she has to prove to the highest and to mother that, you know, she's back on board, you know, with the laws of the, of the land, the, the, the compound, you know, that she's, oh, she's basically, I think we haven't seen it yet. <clears throat> excuse me again, excuse me for the sniffles. My allergies is acting up today. But um, we haven't seen it yet, but they did mention in the past that somebody had went missing besides Andrew. So I don't know if they like, when people turn on them, that they kill them. They remember the chick that they said had tried to run off and get help. And somehow she was found ran over by a train. She was ran over by a whole train. I'm like, uh-huh, somebody done pushed her in front of a train or they done tied her to the train tracks, but she ain't just got ran over by a train. So I do believe that they be killing people, you know, when they try to get away or when they try to um, get help or get rescued. And Tally was telling Brian, he said, you being here can get me killed. You can get me killed, bro. And he was like trying to get some information out of her. But that wasn't the time. That wasn't the place. Because even though they was off to the side, you know, the highest price was watching them. Daikon, mother, you know, they was watching them and stuff. So she's told him, if you really want information, um, 
meet us on Thursdays because that's the day that the ladies go shopping to the markets in the neighborhood or in town. So she said, meet us at the market on Thursday. So I cannot wait till next episode to uh, find out what she is going to reveal to Brian um, next episode when they meet at the store. But anywho, but anywho, um, Cynthia, Cynthia, which is Lynn's cousin. Now, <laughs> this 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 part was crazy. Cynthia, she done dropped in on Lynn because you know her at her house because she forgot her wallet. She find Lynn in bed looking all delirious, like she's drunk, she's high, she's belligerent, she's rambling in her sleep. I mean, talking to herself. Cynthia was like, "Girl, what the hell is wrong with you?" <laughs> she was just talking in her sleep and L Cynthia didn't understand what she was saying. She was like, where do you want to take me? Let's just go for a ride. I'm like, where is she taking this child? Lynn talking about she want to go to the zoo. <laughs> she was like, I want to go to the zoo. Whatever she licked on that paper. I mean, it had her. I mean, she was doing the most. She was doing the most. It was so funny though. <laughs> but instead of taking Lynn to the zoo, she took her to um to the hospital. So while Cynthia was at the hospital um to find out what you know what the heck was wrong with uh Lynn, the doctor informed her that she was on LSD. Of course, you know she was of course like they putting all kind of drugs in them people up there to keep them you know. I don't know how to call it tamed per se, or keep them wanting to come back, keep them wanting to chase as high as you know. Because Lynn, once she got high the first time, and they put all that stuff in her, and I think Daikon, you know, I don't, I don't know if he had sex with her. No, I'm still like, was it him? Was it just him? Was it other men? Was it because the way they said she had bruises on her and all kind of stuff? I'm like, how'd she get all those bruises on her if she was high and she was drugged up for them to have sex with her? Or was it just one? I'm still, I still have questions about that. So y'all let me know what y'all think about that. But anywho, the doctor told her that, but the doctor couldn't tell her nothing else because, you know, she wasn't her husband. She was, you know, they just can't release all kind of information to people, even if you did bring them to the hospital because, you know, concerned about their health. But any anyway, while they was there doing that, um, Lynn's, her husband, Brian, and the sheriff, you know, they had made plans to go to the camp. I'm thinking the sheriff is going to be more inquisitive you know, we're trying to find out what's going on. And this, again, makes me feel some type of way. Like, we know there are some people in that town who are in the back pocket of the coat. And like, like for instance, like, for instance, when uh, Brian, I mean, when uh, Andrew was talking to uh, Daikon, and he was like, how did the highest find out I was uh, married? And even uh, Daikon was like, you never told me you was married. And Andrew was like, yes, I did tell you I was married. We was right here when I told you I was married. And da, da, da. I don't know if he really told him he was married, but he certainly convinced Daikon that he told him when he first got there to the compound that he was married. But Daikon was like, well, why didn't you tell me when your wife was here? And, you know, when, when she was looking all suspect, I mean, they could have killed that woman. For all we know, for snooping on their compounds. But anywho, anywho, he was like, because that's my past. That's my past, and that's not my life anymore. And I've moved on. And you know, <laughs> I'm a I'm a rock a rock a fun, whatever they call themselves. <laughs> But yeah, so he was like, how did the highest know? I, I, I'm convinced that there's somebody probably in the town who is probably uh, uh, looking up information, probably doing background checks, investigating the people who are in the cult or brought to the cult or trying to become a part of the cult. I'm sure the highest has somebody who does that, either in the camp or somebody in the camp who goes to somebody in town. Like, okay, the white guy at the police station. Did y'all see how upset he was when he found out that the sheriff took Brian up there to the compound? So I'm still trying to figure out if he is the one 
or maybe the white lady at the uh, police station, because she's trying to act like, oh, they're great people. You know, every time I see them walking around or at the market, they're nice. You know, they they friendly, you know, so she could be trying to just throw us off, throw them off, <laughs> make it seem like, you know, but then the other guy at the uh, police station, I can't remember his name, but the white guy. He seemed upset when he found out that the sheriff took Brian up there. So I'm like, who is it that's in the back pockets of the coat? It's one of them. It's one of them, if not more than one. <laughs> but if it's more than one, I think the other ones have no idea that the other person is involved. But anywho, anywho, um, while Andrew was up there getting uh seated and cleansed, we, we saw how his wife you know, she, she was at home. She, she's hysterical. She's going crazy over the fact because she still don't know what's up with Andrew. The bills is overflowing. The bills aren't getting paid. I'm like, why is it the FBI or the police or nothing helping her with her bills? Like, it's quite obvious just like that Nature Boy dude. I don't know how many of y'all follow Nature Boy, heard about Nature Boy, but he has somewhat of what you would call a cult, but everybody who joins his cult or whatever, they have to pay. If they have money in the bank, they have to bring their money. They have to, you know, they, you just, you can't just come up there. You, you got to have some kind of, some kind of money because they got to have money to live off of money to survive, you know, to take care of all those people. So I'm assuming that the highest like withdrew all their money or had Andrew withdrew all their money and depleted their accounts. I don't know who did it. <laughs> I don't know why they did, but that's just what I'm assuming. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. But anywho, the scene when Daikon stepped into the quarters of the highest I posted some pictures. Again, I posted some pictures in our private Facebook group. Uh, pictures of the man who was playing the highest. <laughs> that man, his body, he is just, I mean, he's truly gorgeous. I, I had literally forgot this was the man I used to play in that TV show, Days of Our Lives. He's been playing in so many different shows. And he's usually like really gorgeous in his hair and his body and everything. But in this show... He just looks like some crazy maniac. <laughs> so I didn't even get the connection. So today, for some reason, I was like, let me look on Wiki and find out who this man is that is really playing, you know, the highest. And then I looked it up and saw that, <laughs> okay, all right, I see that's where, because he looked familiar, but I couldn't, I couldn't put my finger on it. And somebody else in the group said, <laughs> they said, you ain't the only one. I knew that face was familiar. But anyway, the man's real name is Matt Sedino, and he's been around for a long time. But anyway, when Daikon stepped into the quarters of the highest and we saw the highest getting that massage and getting his foot worked on and everything. And he was just sitting there as if it was just what was going on was just something that happens in his everyday life. Like it's so natural. I mean, he's just sitting there butt naked, just enjoying himself. And Daikon walks in after he dismissed the other guys. Daikon, he helped the highest get dressed. He was detangling his hair and all that. Then we find out. Daikon, we had mentioned before how we thought he was jealous of Andrew. The highest said, you're jealous. You're jealous of Andrew. And he's like, how you know? Oh, the highest knows everything. That's like his favorite word. The highest knows everything. Um, so even though Daikon has been with the highest for over 12 years, Daikon is scared that the highest is planning to replace him with Andrew. So while tonguing down Daikon... <laughs> The highest, you know, he reassured him that he would never replace him. And Daikon and mother assures the highest that she and Daikon, along with the rest of the cult, will do their part to ensure that the, they protect the camp when the sheriff comes snooping around. But one question I asked in the chat, not in the chat, but one question I asked in our Facebook group, um, I said, uh, what do y'all think about that comment? Um, Daikon made to the highest when the highest realized Daikon was jealous of Andrew. To me, it kind of sounded like the highest has put other men before Daikon in the past. And Daikon, to me, 
seems like the highest bottom bitch. Now, now y'all let me know. <laughs> y'all let me know. Somebody responded and said they think the highest actually brought out the child in Daikon. That's what they said. Do y'all agree? Let me know. Let me know how y'all feel about that. But he's been there for 12 years. 12 years with the highest. And obviously, he's in love with the man. This isn't just like the other guys on the compound. They don't look at the highest like that. They don't talk to the highest like that. They aren't as protective of the highest like he is. So it's, you can just see he's in love with the man. But I was like, oh. Mm, 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 mm. I, I don't get it though. I don't get it. What's the connection with him and Lynn? Like for a minute, I was thinking like he liked Lynn, or you know, they had some kind of context, some sparks, some something. So I don't know. I don't know. I can't wait till they get to the point to where we finally find out what really actually happened to Lynn. Besides, we know that she has sex. We know that she was drugged. But I want to know what exactly who did what to Lynn. <laughs> that's what I'm waiting on to discover. But anyway, that scene when he was in there, oh my God, and he stood up in the highest his body. I mean, he looked like a like I, I, um um maybe a la athletic track star or something. I mean, just muscles from the ankles up. I was like, oh God, he is. I see why Daikon is so jealous of him. <laughs> But then, but then, but then, Andrew, when he found out that Clark had found um, that picture that fell out of his wife wallet, and the picture had Andrew and his wife on it, um, Daikon, y'all see how Daikon just popped up out of nowhere? He just came out of nowhere talking about, that's what he was saying, you know, I didn't know you were married. Why you didn't tell me you was married? But again, Andrew convinced Daikon that he did tell him that he was married, but, but, even though Andrew sound pretty convincing or, you know, convincing enough for Daikon. The crazy part was Daikon finds it, you know, hard to believe that Andrew didn't know why the highest knew the lady was his wife. It's like, how is the highest finding out all this information? Again, I think somebody is secretly doing some investigation, some snooping around on all the people. Maybe they they like going into their finances, depleting all of their bank accounts, finding out if they got children, grandparents, finding out if they have any loved ones. Like one of the main complaints for the sheriff and Brian to be there in the first place is because people are uh making accusations that a lot of people in that camp, in that compound, are being held hostage or held against their will. Or maybe there's some abuse going on up there, you know, something like that. So he was like, Dykan was like, you mean to tell me you didn't tell the highest that you was married, but the highest knew that you was married? So again, I think somebody down at the police station is in the highest back pocket, you know, <laughs> snooping around in everybody's private life. But the part when the sheriff uh, showed up, that part when the sheriff and Brian first got on the compound, um, <clears throat> Lynn's wife, the entire, I mean, uh, Brian, Brian, Lynn's wife, you know, the cop, him, when he showed up with the sheriff, the entire cult, they were standing around, they singing, they dancing, they chanting. They was, it was like, we are the Raku, Shaba Sha. We are the Raku, Yasa Ra. They just kept chanting it over and over and over and over again. <laughs> I was like, they really putting on a show, making it seem like they're all on one accord, that this is a peaceful organization, per se. Um, but then, you know, they offered them uh, snacks and, you know, uh, oh, one question here. Um, as far as uh, mother, when she was offering the sheriff uh, something to eat, and he was like, no, I'm not hungry. She was like, really butthurt about it because uh, she said, you know, I made this food specifically for your visit. So immediately I start thinking, was she trying to poison them? Was she trying to put some food in them, trying to put some food in them with some of those drugs and LA, you know, all the other stuff that they, you know, be giving people? I'm like, was she trying to poison him or was she really 
you know, sincerely just wanted to feed the man, wanted to give him some snacks. <laughs> but then the part when Brian was walking around the compound with Andrew and Brian wanted to look into the, uh, the um, what do you call them? Those containers, those containers where they was keeping, uh, where they was keeping tally. And Andrew was going off. He was getting mad tomorrow. You just being so nosy. Why you want to look all around the whole place? Da, 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 da. And I'm thinking maybe he thought that there was still going to be some remnants of tally being in there, like some scraps of food or something showing that they are keeping people locked up in containers in there. But then Daikon comes out of nowhere, just walks up out of nowhere and he tells him let the man see the container matter of fact open up everything let him see everything so when they was talking when it was just brian and andrew and they were trying to you know figure out if they knew each other because andrew was like dang you look familiar did we go to school together and brian you know he he's he tried to convince andrew that they went to school together that they just went to separate schools and then they started talking about football games and rivals and who was the the uh lead star on the team and all this kind of stuff <laughs> brian got tripped up when Andrew started asking him questions about where they both grew up, Andrew was really trying to figure out where does he know this cop. And Brian was trying to find out if Andrew is really part of the cult or if he was still just playing undercover. He started using terms like they, like somebody in our private Facebook group, our ruthless uh, Facebook group. He said he was becoming convinced that Andrew was completely turned, like he was completely brainwashed, especially after he got seated. But he said, um, the person and our group said they now have a little faith. They got back a little faith in this episode when Andrew referred to the cult as they and not we or us. And then they said, plus the fact that he was seated by the highest, highest made him a little angry, especially when Ruth tried to talk to him about it. So he probably got some stuff plan but thinks he can't trust nobody else now and i was like that is true he did start you know saying they and then the person uh somebody else responded and said uh if he can keep that going he can escape without a problem so we shall see we shall see again y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode those who might come in the chat or come in and watch the video after it's already done after the live is over um make sure you drop a comment in the chat and let me know what you thought about any of these scenes um especially about lynn about uh daikon and a relationship with the highest um about andrew do you think he's really turned or he's just putting on a big front. He's doing a good job. <laughs> His acting is awesome. He's doing a good job if he really is not part of the cult. Like, that's what the FBI was trying to figure out. Like, has he turned? Is he with us anymore? Or is he really with them? So that's what they're trying to figure out, you know, in this episode. And uh, hopefully when we watch the next episode and Brian meets with the ladies, uh, meet with Tally at the market, maybe, maybe Tally and them will be able to give the sheriff, not the sheriff, but Brian, some information to try to get them the heck up out of there. But we shall see. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the next episode, you guys. So again, make sure you guys like the video. Make sure you share the video. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And again, we have some Facebook groups. So if you're interested in joining our uh, Ruthless, Tyler Perry, Ruthless, BET TV show fan group on Facebook. Make sure you click that link in the stream and uh, click join the group. And then you just got to answer a uh, few questions, you know, saying you'll abide by the rules, rules like uh, not being rude to people, not bullying, you know, just rules like normal Facebook um, group rules. So if you are interested in joining that group, please join that group, uh, Ruthless. We also have another group <clears throat> excuse me um the hood table group which is just like our the hood table uh youtube channel so we have a the hood table facebook group uh we talk about different things in there things going on in the hood my hood your hood every hood uh things going on in the news and the media you know we talk about a lot of stuff in there and then um for our friday night lives that we do on youtube where it's no topics off limit no holes barred Friday night live sessions every Friday night at 9 p.m. Some of the topics that we have discussed 
like during the week or whatnot, we bring up on the Friday Night Live and we invite people onto the screen. We can have up to six people onto the screen. Um, all we do is drop a link in the chat. Anybody can jump on the screen and actually be on the screen with us discussing different topics. Um, so if you want to join the hood table, I'm going to drop that link in there right now to our the hood table Facebook group. Same thing, click join, answer a few questions. As long as I don't think you're a troll, because I do look at y'all Facebooks. I mean, I don't be going all through your stuff, but I look, I see how many followers you got, how many friends you have, how many pictures you have to make sure you're not a troll because I don't want anybody in our group who really should not be in our group. So with that being said, in the meantime and in between time, make sure you like the video, share the video, subscribe to the Hood Table YouTube channel. We on IG, we on Twitter, and the Hood Table has a Facebook group and our Ruthless uh, Facebook group. You can join that too. So um, if you want to hit me up anytime, I'm on Facebook, I'm on IG, I'm on Twitter as the Hood Table. So or leave me a comment in the chat. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I still got a little time before my lunch is up, like 17 minutes. So I'm going to grab me a bite to eat. I am working from home, um, like most of the world right now. And uh, so I'm going to get back to work after my lunch is up. And I hope you guys all have a blessed day and have a great weekend. And don't forget, right here on the hood table tomorrow night is Friday Night Live. We got some topics lined up. But again, there's no topics off limit, no host bar. So if you got topics you want to send me or you want to bring up while we're live, feel free. <laughs> That's what Friday Night Live is all about at the hood table. So I'm going to get out of here, you guys. Stay safe, be blessed, and remember to remain healthy as possible. Wear the mask when you're going to the store. Wear the mask when you're going to get your breaks done, to, to, to the dollar store, to, you know, wherever you're going. Make sure you got the mask. Make sure you got them hand sanitizers and try to be healthy and remain healthy so you don't get the Rona. <laughs> I'm out, you guys. Have a good day.